We're home! Adam's dad just dropped us off. What did you get up to? We've been playing and listening to fun kids. On the radio? Actually, it was on a smart speaker. Yeah, we just shouted Alexa, play fun kids. And it started playing songs we liked, not like your grown-up station. Oh, uh, well, we probably can't do that as we don't have Alexa, we have Google. Hey Google, play fun kids. How did you know how to do that? George, from The Breakfast Show, told us how it works on smart speakers. I should have known. He's very smart. Get Fun Kids on your smart speaker all around the house. Just tell it to play Fun Kids. Hey, my name is Bex and welcome to the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast. It's a busy one this week. We've got quite a lot of stuff for you. I'll be talking to Katie and Kevin Sang about their brand new book. We'll hear an exclusive reading from Claire Weze and we'll be chatting to the Children's Laureate, Joseph Coilo. Uh, plus, we'll be giving you our recommendations on what you've got to be reading this month as well. So let's dive straight in, shall we? First up in today's episode, we're going to be chatting to the Waterstones Children's Laureate, Joseph Coilo. He's talking to us about the stepping into stories fest and he's telling us what it's like when he does a live event i am joined right now by incredible author and children's laureate joseph coilo how you doing joseph i'm great bex how are you i'm i'm really good thank you and just really happy to be speaking to you i feel like i'm gonna bump into you and speak to you every so often in your children's laureate journey so how has it been going so far oh it's been wonderful it's been a, a real ride of events and meeting people and, and doing really lovely, cool things and celebrating books and reading and literacy. I mean, that sounds like the dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still pinching myself. <laughs> but yeah, it's been, it's been brilliant. And we've got some fantastic things coming up this year because I'm continuing my library marathon. So going all over the country, joining libraries and still filming poetry prompts to get kids writing poems every week. So yeah, it's all going really well. Yeah, I've seen a little bit of what you've been up to. And I've also seen your many, many travels to libraries. Do you have a favourite library so far or something you've seen at a library that you think is really cool? There was a library in Blackpool that was in a converted flat, in a tiny converted one bedroom flat. And it was it was just so cute and lovely. It's probably the tiniest library I've been in. And there was one in Peterborough that was on a huge purple bus which was probably bigger than the one that was in the converted flat. <laughs> so they're probably my two <laughs> favourites at the moment. <laughs> I love that. I love the idea of like hidden libraries that you don't know exist, but then you, it's a bit like when people put um, books in post boxes and, and not post boxes, uh, telephone boxes. And it's just like, oh yeah, like a mini library. It's so cool. Oh yeah, I love those. We have a few of those in my area where, yeah, people can just go and like swap books and leave books. And e- even in our train station, you can <gasps> take a book and leave a book. <laughs> which is quite nice. So, so cool. Um, so you're here to tell us today about uh, this Stepping Into Stories event in Herne Hill in South London. Um, I, it looks pretty amazing. It, it looks really exciting. Yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic festival. There's over 60 events happening. I've already done my events. I, I sort of kicked off the festival the other day with several schools sharing poems and, and stories. But there's so many more events happening. You've got Patrice Lawrence there. You've got Alex Wheatall. Kerry Burnell, that many will recognise from CBBs, yeah. a fantastic programme of live events, but also free virtual events where people can log on and find out about the publishing industry as well. So it's a real mixture of kind of live fun events for kids, but also events for those interested in getting into the publishing industry. Yeah, I did have a look through the uh, the list of events and there's loads of stuff. Also, like you say, I mean, the list of authors is incredible. I did notice Kerry Burnell. I also noticed uh, Sam Sedgman, who, um, yeah. fittingly, his, he writes a lot of books about trains and the theme for this year is All Aboard. Yeah, which, which just sounds fantastic, doesn't it? It works pretty well together. Yeah. So how, how did your event go? Did you, did you fit the theme in any way or did you just go rogue and do your own thing? I went a little bit rogue because I was sharing poems to get kids smiling and we started making up our own poems. Um, And I was also sharing some of the stories from my Fairy Tales Gone Bad series, um, which is illustrated by Freya Hartas. And so the kids were coming up with their own Fairy Tales Gone Bad titles. And we had really bizarre, brilliant things like Jack and the Spaghetti Stalk, (laughs) about Jack climbing a a stalk made of, of spaghetti. And yeah, they got quite dark in places as well, which was lovely. Lots of zombies and uh, creepy things. 
Well, you know, fairy tales do get a bit dark. That's kind of how they go. I love that. That's amazing. You mentioned there's lots of other um, events and, and authors there as well. Is there anybody in particular that uh, you would go visit yourself or somebody that you're excited that people get to see? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's really wonderful that people get to see Patrice Lawrence, who's got a couple of, of events. So she's sharing her yeah. elemental detectives, but also her Windrush uh, book as well, her uh, picture book. So I think that's great because you can cover all ages. But there's such a there's such a huge variety of, of people to see and ages. So I think families can get down there and there's something for, for everyone. And you mentioned as well, there are some events in person, but some events virtually. So if you're not in Herne Hill, you can still get involved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can head over uh, to the website, which is steppingintostories.org and just check out the brilliant programme. I say there's over, over 60 events. Um, and so if you can't get down there in person, you can log online and watch something online, which is w- w- one of the great things about about now is that we've all got a bit used to using online, but it's it's actually proven to be really useful. Yeah, I've done a few live events uh, on Zoom and stuff like that, and they're actually really cool. And it means that you can just meet more people who maybe couldn't get to London or couldn't travel in. And it is a really good way of being accessible for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it, it totally uh, sort of broadens the horizons for of events and I've certainly done a lot more events where you know rather than just sharing with one class I'm able to share with several classes at the same time or sometimes several schools and sometimes thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of children because we've got multiple schools logging in and that's just lovely it re- really really is lovely I still I still love doing the live events I'm so pleased that we're able to get back out into the world now that's what was so lovely doing the stepping into stories event was actually my first live event of the year of 2023 oh, wow. yeah so it was really lovely to get back on stage and to to warm up the, the vocal cords and get back <laughs> into performing because it yeah it take, you do have to warm up and get yourself back into it um, but uh, the voice didn't crack luckily despite all the Christmas uh eating which, which I haven't quite got, gotten over yet <laughs> I love it do you have like a little backstage warm-up routine do you do what actors do and you kind of go la 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 or do you just like kind of do some tongue twisters or something I try to do warm-ups because I've you know I've come from a theatre background and like we're always told like you must warm up and so I try <laughs> to warm up when I can but it's often quite hard because you sort of turn up to a space and often the space is filled with people and you don't often get a green room or, or time to yourself. So I sort of do silent warm ups while I might just have a little walk around the space whilst there's people milling about and kind of be moving my mouth and my jaw and my tongue and my lips, probably looking very strange. If I'm by myself in a room, then I certainly go and do like a load of tongue twisters and start practicing some of the poems to get my voice all warmed up. But yeah, otherwise I look, I look slightly strange <laughs> walking around pulling faces. I love it. People backstage getting their own free show, they'll be like, wow, Joseph's getting involved early doors. Amazing. Yeah, I, I used to, I actually used to sing and I'm not a great singer, but I would sing at the top of my voice just to kind of clear the airways and get everything uh, warmed up. But um, I, I felt sorry for my cast members when I would <laughs> do that, really um, unleash that on them. Hey, well, next time I see you at a book event, I want to see you singing as well as doing your poetry, <laughs> as well as talking about libraries. I want the whole thing done in song. Is that possible? Yes. Yeah. But you will have to join me. <laughs> so oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I'll, I'll totally get on the side possible. of the stage. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there's no watchers everyone gets involved yeah that's a fair that's a fair enough point i'll i'll do the verses you do the choruses all the way around i'm not sure um we'll take it in turns um well hopefully um i will see you very soon joseph and yeah we should say again the website for the hernhill stepping into stories event is steppingintostories.org it's happening this weekend so everybody who can and who wants to should get involved either virtually or in real life and is there is there anything else you need to tell us about it or any event we can see you at soon as well oh i'm doing a ton of festivals uh, throughout the year um oh gosh hay ledbury lots and lots of festivals but you can see me every monday on the uh, book trust website if you do uh, www.booktrust.org.uk forward slash poetry prompts and there'll be a new way for you to write a poem in a fun exciting interesting way every monday the videos go live at seven o'clock um in the morning so um there's there's one coming this this coming monday so log on and, and get writing poetry brilliant yeah i have seen them they're really really cool um well thank you so much for chatting to us uh joseph and hopefully we will speak very soon thanks bex take care Big thank you to Joseph Coilo. Oh, I think he's doing marvellous things for the world of children's books. Next up, speaking of doing marvellous things for the world of children's books, it's Katie and Kevin Sang. They've got so many amazing books out in the world right now. Plus, they've got a brand new one 
called Susie and the Moonbugs. It's a kind of space adventure, and uh, I think we should check it out right now. Hey, kids, time to get to school. Can we have fun kids in the car? I think it'll have to be my station this morning, kids. I'm not sure we can get fun kids in the car. Yes, we can. We've got Apple CarPlay. Um, yes, but I'm not sure how we do it. I know. The Fun Kids app works with CarPlay or Android Auto, like Nikki's mum's car has. So, Dad, all you need to do is plug your phone into the car and you'll see the app appear on the dashboard. True, but, um, I was going to drive mum's car today as mine has to go to be fixed. That's OK. You can connect your phone through Bluetooth in Mum's car. Where do you get all these facts? You should listen to Fun Kids more. Take Fun Kids with you. Download the app and when you're in the car, you can Bluetooth it or connect it to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, lovely. So we are joined right now by Kevin and Katie Sang. Hey, guys, how you doing? Hello, hello. So good. So excited to be on the show. Thanks so much for having us. Well, it's been a little while since I spoke to you guys. It was it was um, probably last year, maybe. And in that time, you've written so many more books. I can uh, barely believe how um, busy you are and how much you get, get done. But you've got a brand new book out called Space Blasters. It's Susie and the Moon Bugs. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, I was going to say brand new series, but it's the second one in the series, right? Yeah, it is the second one in the series, but it still feels like a pretty brand new series because the first Space Blasters book um, only came out last summer, and then this one came out uh, just six months later. So it is the second book in the Space Blasters series, um, but what's fun about these books is they can be read in any order. Um, and the setup for the concept is, so we have our inventor, Susie Wen. Um, she's a child inventor. She's very curious. Uh, she likes to do experiments. And one of her inventions goes wrong and it zaps her into her favorite TV show. And it turns out the show Space Blasters is real. And she is, you know, you know, not just actors. She is actually on a spaceship in space and they need her help to save the universe. Um, and what's really fun about these books is they're, of course, you know, fiction, um, but they're really inspired by real life facts. Um, so we tried to pepper throughout the book lots of space and science facts. So for kids who are kind of more interested in the nonfiction side of things, there'll hopefully be something for them there. But then for people who just like a wild and wacky and fun adventure, um, they will absolutely find that. Uh, and in Susie and the Moonbugs, um, the spaceship that they're on has a crash landing for mysterious reasons, and they find themselves on a new planet that they have to figure out how to uh, fix their spaceship see what's going wrong and, you know, carry on saving the universe. Oh my goodness. I mean, what you've just done my job really, haven't you? You've, you've fantastically described that book. That was brilliant. Uh, now, you did mention all of the facts in the book as well. I thought that was a really cool little extra bit because as well as getting a story, you're also, if you're reading, getting some little space facts in the corner of every few pages. Um, do you have a particular fact that you loved? Was it quite exciting, like researching all of that stuff? We, I absolutely loved researching for, for space past, uh, space blasters. I've I've always loved space from from uh, you know when I was really really young, and so it had a lot of fun looking up facts. I think one of my favorite facts is Jupiter has over eighty moons. I I didn't realize that, and actually they're finding new ones like all the time. Yeah, in the first book, uh, Space Blasters, Susie Saves the Universe, we say that Jupiter has seventy eight moons because at the time of writing it did, but as of now that it has eighty three. Apparently, because Jupiter's so massive and has so much gravity, it's just attracting more and more moons. Um, so that was really interesting. And my uh, favorite fact that blew my mind, I was researching it for the third book, which is the Comet of Chaos is that galaxies devour other galaxies. Um, and our nearest galaxy, we're in the Milky Way, of course, and our nearest galaxy, Andromeda, is like a mega monster galaxy, and it's devoured tons of other galaxies, and uh, we're next, but not for another like, five billion years. So we've got some time. Oh, phew. Okay, for a second, I was like, oh my goodness, what's, what's going to happen? But okay, you've calmed me down. That's all right. That's okay. Um, and tell me, Susie's such a lovely character as well. She um, starts off the book saying, you know, she loves to chat, but obviously her family are quite busy. And then she herself gets transported onto this kind of amazing adventure and she kind of saves the day. She's a great character. Thanks. We love Susie. We had a lot of fun coming up with her. You know, we really wanted to make sure she felt distinctive from um, Sam Wu, which is our other character kind of for uh, in the Sam Wu's Not Afraid series in the same age range. Because um, for any uh, keen readers of mine and Kevin's books, they might recognize Space Blasters because it is actually Sam's favorite show. And while he never goes into the show, um, some of the key characters are kind of referenced throughout. So when we had the opportunity to really build out the world of Space Blasters, that was really fun. Uh, but no, we wanted to have, you know, uh, a key character, child character who was 
really creative and curious. Um, you know, one of kind of a hallmark of Susie is she's never afraid to ask a question, even if, you know, she thinks there's no shame in not knowing something and how you learn things is by asking questions. Um, and so we, we had a lot of fun kind of creating her as a character. But I have to say my favorite character in the series after Susie is there's a alien named Five-Eyed Frank who's very suspicious. And we have a lot of fun writing Five-Eyed Frank. <laughs> Was he based on anybody you know? I don't know. He he came pretty organically actually, because he he wasn't a he didn't major in, in space flashes when we were writing Sam Wu. And with Susie, he just his 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 personality came right away when Susie woke up on the ship, and he was like, "Who is this human on, that's invaded you know in, onto our ship?" And uh, it just went from there, really. And I think cause we kind of needed because you know it's a it's a smallish cast. We've got Susie, who's a child, and then Captain Jane, who heads up the spaceship, and Spaceman Jack, and they're both adults. And of course, you know, for for us, a thing that I love in children's fiction is banter, and you can't really have an adult like teasing a child, really. And so Five Eyed Frank kind of plays the part of um, you know, he's a suspicious kind of wacky alien. Uh, so you know, because there's no other children on the ship, you know, uh, Susie and Frank, they kind of have the the relationship of there where they can kind of tease each other um, and it works much more organically. So Frank was just like, just kind of a, a delight to, to develop as a character and it becomes a more crucial character even in, in the next, uh, the next Space Blasters book. Oh, exciting. I, I, I did love in the book, it's kind of like straight in on the action. Almost immediately we are off and away into space. And it did strike me that actually sci-fi for a younger audience is, is not that common. I think it's quite um, quite well done for you guys to have done that because it's not really around so much. Was it quite hard to write a sci-fi book? I think so. I, me and Katie love brainstorming, thinking of wacky ideas. We've done a lot with, with the Dragon books over the years. And I don't know, for me with Katie, I, I love coming up with new planets and, and, and creatures. And like I said, I love the research. Um, and yeah, I, I suppose we did look and say, why isn't there more science fiction in, in children's fiction? Yeah, that was definitely something that we, you know, that was kind of in our minds that we wanted wanted to do. Um, we again, we wanted to feel have it feel distinctive, kind of from our other series. You know, we love we love writing the Dragon Realm books. That's you know proper fantasy fantasy adventure. Um, and so we were trying to think, you know, space felt like a really, uh, you know, the final frontier, like a really like we could do anything with our imagination. And what's been fun is coming up with things like really out there planets and aliens, but then trying to ground it kind of in in real science facts. Um, so the research definitely kind of helped guide uh, some of the decisions we made around the plot. Um, but mostly, you know, it was just fun being able to let our imaginations really run wild. Um, when we do school visits, we do a workshop with students where we ask them to help come up with a new planet. And it's so fun to see where their ma- imagination goes. And it really is just kind of, you know, the options are endless in uh, thinking of what kind of planet would it be? Who would live on that planet? And kind of building it together. Oh, incredible. I love it. And so, of course, we've mentioned we've got the Space Blaster series, but you also have uh, Samwu and you've got the Dragon Realm series as well. And do we have more on the cards for any of those? We've got coming um, in March. We're really excited. Uh, we have a World Book Day book, which is a huge author milestone. Yes, Kevin, uh, Kevin and I were over the moon. We found out. Um, it was so exciting. So this is uh, it's set in the same universe as the Dragon Realm books. It's called a Dragon Realm Adventure, but uh, and it chronologically takes place after the fifth one. But we set it up so it can be read by anyone. So anyone who is new to the series or hasn't come across it, but if you have read the books, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, and then straight after that, in September, we are launching a a new Dragon series, again, in the same universe. It's called Dragon Force. Um, and similarly, you know, if you've read our previous Dragon books, you'll really hopefully love it. But it is also uh, being written and designed to welcome new readers as well. So, you know, we're, we're all about all things space and all things dragons this year. Hey, look, space and dragons. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, what's not to love? That's I'm like, you know, we've got we've got something for everyone, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for chatting to us. Uh, we should say Space Blasters, Susie and the Moonbugs is out super soon. It's in fact probably out right now. Is that right? It yeah. is. And you know who I forgot? We I just realized we've forgotten to mention our incredible illustrator, Amy oh, yeah. Nguyen, who I think the illustrations are the best part of the book. She brings Susie to life so perfectly and all of the aliens and creatures. So we are so grateful to work with such a brilliant, brilliant illustrator, especially for um, books in this age range. You know, the cover and the interior illustrations are so important. So huge shout out to Amy uh, for making the, you know, really bringing Susie and characters to life. Yeah, good shout. Yeah, the, like I said, the book is really fun, guys. But yeah, the illustrations are extra special, aren't they? Uh, we think so. Well, thank you so much for having us and for all the great questions. We've loved getting the chance to chat to you. No worries, Anna. One day, guys, we will meet in the studio and I'll get uh, to chat to you all things about dragons and space and, and dark. I think that's Samuel as well. That's, that'd be awesome. Uh, I look forward to that day. <laughs> thanks so much, Beck. Thank you. 
I love Katie and Kevin Sang so much. Their energy is amazing. One day I hope to meet them in person and get them in the Fun Kids studio. Now, lastly, on today's show, we've got a voice note from Claire Waze. This is a little reading of her book, The Storm Swimmer. Hello, everyone. I'm Claire Waze, and I'm the author of The Lightning Catcher. I'm here to tell you a little bit about my new book, The Storm Swimmer. It's about a girl called Janika, whose life has been turned upside down, and she spends the first chapter and a half in a very bad mood because of it. She's lost her home and has to spend the summer at her grandparents' seaside boarding house. She misses her parents and her friends, but then she meets a boy who seems to live in the sea. So now I'm going to read for you from chapter two, where Janika has just had her big upheaval and is still cross and upset. Two days and 300 miles later, Janika sprawled on her stomach facing the sea, arms outstretched, chin on the soft, damp sand. The tide line, with its knots of seaweed and bones and crabs and an orange welly, was just behind her. She might easily never leave this spot, ever. Not just because it was nice listening to the waves sloshing in, but because everything she loved was now hundreds of miles away. Grandpa's footsteps startled her as they crunched over the pebbles. She must have gone into a bit of a dream. Playing dead, Ginny? I've never seen anyone lie so still. Janika said nothing. From this angle, his nose looked very long and his moustache seemed to be clinging to it on a crazy slant that didn't make sense. She was just thinking how nice it would be to see the world like this all the time when Grandpa said, Are you okay, Ginny? It's a good job the tide's going out. Yep, she said. Fine. Grandpa was on one knee now. A smell of oranges seeped from his trouser pocket. You're going to get wet, he said. His head was slightly tilted to meet her eyes more easily, but his hat looked ready to fall off. Come home with me. Janika sighed. In a minute. Just need to watch the waves for a bit longer. Alone again, Janika folded her arms beneath her chin and returned to perfect stillness, like something dead. It suited her mood perfectly. She didn't move a muscle not even when she noticed something in the water moving towards her. It was a person, a boy. He arrived inside a wave, totally invisible unless you were specially looking. He rode the middle of the surf, head just underwater, eyes brighter gleams of green-grey, like the sea. When he reached the water's edge, he was already sitting upright, but Janika didn't see how he made that move. It was completely fluid. The water slid away from his top half like oil. The rest of him stayed in the waves. Hey, before I let you go, I've got to tell you about some brilliant books coming out at the moment. Uh, The first one is Secret Beast Club, The Unicorns of Silver Street. This is by Robin Birch. So it's the first book in a brand new series. Get on board at the ground floor, that's what I say. It's all about Aisha and Jaden. They are two introverts who happily keep to themselves, but a centuries-old secret club which protects mythological creatures has other plans for them. That sounds right up my street. Uh, The second book you maybe want to check out is Rani Reports on the Missing Millions. This is Gabrielle and Satish Shruharak. It is a young journalist who is eager to win the junior journalist competition and she might be able to thanks to the cryptic clues of an eccentric millionaire. Uh Oh, that sounds amazing. I love both of those books. That's Secret Beast Club and Rani Reports on the Missing Millions. Uh, And that is pretty much it for me today. Big thank you to Joseph Coilo, to Kevin and Katie Sang, and of course, to Claire Oweze. We'll be back very soon. In the meantime, if you've liked this podcast, thank you so much for listening. And remember to like, subscribe, and tell all of your friends about it. I'll be back very soon. Bye. Okay, enough screen time. Oh, Dad. Can you listen to the radio instead, please? I suppose so. They play some good tunes on... Not your boring grown-up station. It's not. Thank it, please. We can get that downstairs on the smart speaker, not in the bedroom. It's okay. We can get it on the app. If you say so. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Now, let me have your tablet. Screen time is over. About that, you just said we can listen on the app. 
and the app is on our tablet. It was downloaded from the App Store for free yesterday by Mum. But you did promise. Listen anywhere. Smart kids listen on smart speaker. This is Fun Kids.